Yesterday, I made a video, and I said, when you go to church today, and the pastors, I'm sure they're already at church. <clears throat> Most Christians are already at their church. But when you watch this, here, here's what I want you to do. I want you to start taking the pastors. I would love for the pastors to start encouraging their members. Hi, Rachel. Hi, Joyce. God bless you, dear saints. Good morning, friends. Rachel, I'm tell you, she's one like Terry, and they get out there and, and they share the gospel with people because we don't want these people to go to hell. But here's what I want to encourage you and encourage the pastors to do. Become someone who invites strangers to church. I'm not in talking, talking about inviting someone who you know. I'm talking about inviting a stranger to church. In the last four days, I had the opportunity to invite five people to church. They all told me they would come, so I'm, I'm going to find out today when I get to church if they came. Now, I know one person doesn't have a ride, <clears throat> so whether he shows up or not, I don't know, but we're going to find out. But at least I had the privilege to invite five. And as I was sharing this with Pastor Robert last night, I was telling him, you know, you know, we need to tell people, uh, encourage them to invite people to church. And, you know, ask them, how many have y'all invited? Him and his wife busted out laughing because I think they thought I was talking to them. And um, so I told him, I said, well, brother, I said, I, I'm not talking about you. I'm, I'm sure you invited somebody. And they just laughed even, even harder. But I just told him, I said, look, we got to get active with this thing. We got to start inviting total strangers. I mean, absolutely people you don't, you don't even know. Invite them to your church. If you're giving out like this, if you're going to give out these little tracts, get you a, a tape, tape a little white piece of paper on it, down, maybe down here at the bottom, and put the phone number and the address and the name of your church. And ask them, please come Sunday. Please come Sunday. You know, and, and, and like, like I've said, you know, even if you have to say, if you'll come Sunday, I'll treat you to uh, a Wendy's dinner. You know, you can go down to Wendy's or most of these places and buy a $10 or an $8 Wendy's gift card. And you can even put that... Or, or have that in your pocket. And when they show up and they came to church, you can say, hey, here's your free meal. Here's a $10 gift card from Wendy's. Here's a $15 gift card to Texas Roadhouse. You know, that little track, getting them. Hearing a man of God preach the uncompromising word of God just might get that one person saved. You know what you've done? You have made the angels in heaven rejoice. You've made the angels in heaven rejoice. And people now, or a person, is born into the kingdom and will never experience hell. That's a suggestion. Now, but like I said, pastors, encourage your body of Christ to invite people to church. And... And I would suggest, you know, before the service begins, just show of hands, congregation, if you invited at least one person that was a total stranger to church this week, raise your hand. And see how many people invite. You might have 15 hands go up, which means 15 people had been invited to your church service. That's great. And then start keeping account of how many souls get birthed into the kingdom. That is the most important, most important number in your accountant. It ain't how much money you raise. That's irrelevant. Your money is not going to go to heaven. It ain't going to go to heaven. 
So if you've raised $200,000 and the number of souls that truly accepted the Lord for this week is zero, you're all excited that we raised $200,000. And if the souls that got saved is zero, pastor, you ought to go straight home eat a meal, and get on your knees and pray, God, what must I do to bring others into the kingdom? It is all about the salvation of people that are going to hell. Do you realize when the trumpet of God sounds, we're going to leave our, our church building here? We're going to leave our clothes here? We're going to leave friends here? We're going to leave our cars here. We're going to leave our riches here. The only two things you can take to heaven is yourself and somebody else. And if you are living your life and you don't care if the rest of the world goes to hell, you do not have the love of Christ Jesus in your heart. Because Jesus Christ came to be the sacrifice for the whole world. And if you can live your life day after day after day and not care that people are going to hell, you do not have the love of God in your heart. Friend, let me tell you something. I remember the day that I got saved and I knew when I got up from that altar, I would never see hell. And I'm going to tell you this. If you don't love God enough to care that other people are going to hell, <laughs> you might just need to go ahead and get another dose of the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ did not come to this earth to teach us how to build sanctuaries. Jesus Christ did not come to this earth to make us rich. He did not come to this earth to give us goosey bumps. John said, Behold the Lamb of God who has come to be the sacrifice, the Lamb of God who has come to take away the sin of this world. Jesus Christ died, not so that we could build great buildings, not that we could be so blessed. The blessings that God gives us is to establish his kingdom on the earth. And establishing the kingdom on the earth is not building buildings that touch the sky. It is to preach the uncompromised salvation word of God that people will feel the conviction of the Holy Ghost, will come forward, fall on their knees, and accept the Lord Jesus Christ. We have gotten away from the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus said, when I come back, Will I find faith on the earth? And I promise you, he was not talking about faith heal. We have lost the faith. Faith. We've lost the faith and the trust in the Lord that he is our Savior. He is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. When he left this earth, he said, Go into all the world preaching the gospel. But you know what we've done with our riches? We take our riches down there and drop it in an altar. The pastor and the accountants take it to the back and they pay their $10,000 a month mortgage. They pay all the bills of the church and they give a little bit or whatever to ministries Across the world. But you don't hear a preacher telling his congregation, friends, today I want you to go out into that world and share the gospel. Share what I gave you today with people out there and invite them to come to church. Jesus gave a perfect example. He said, the feast is ready. Go out and tell them to come. He sent out his servants, and everybody was too busy with their life. The servants come back and says, Lord, they ain't coming. 
This one's too busy doing this one. This is too busy doing that. This is too busy doing that. I'm too busy doing this. Basically, I'm too busy with my life. He said, I tell you what, you go to the highways and the byways. I want you to get the strangers. I want you to get the sick, the poor, the outcast, and get them in here because we're going to have a feast in my father's house. That's what you and I need to do, friend. We don't need to go to people that's heard the gospel, that's done turned it down. We need to get out there on the highways and the byways to the outcasts, to those that the world has thrown away, that they don't care about no more. You know, I'm going to tell you what, there's some churches today, they don't want you in their church service if you can't give them something. You go to these big churches and see how many bicycles you got parked outside. You ain't going to have no bicycles parked outside. You're going to have, <laughs> you're going to have nice cars, car after car after car. You go in church, you got the finest clothes in there. It's all about money. Tell you what, you walk, I, I dare you, you walk into one of them churches with flip flops on a tank top, and raggedy pants, and see how you get treated. You go in there, and, and don't don't go sit down. Just kind of look around, like 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 where you like looking where you might want to sit. I guarantee you, you'll have three or four people come up to you, and it won't be to help you find a seat. They'll say, "Look, brother, uh, can can do, do you need some money?" Uh uh. uh you know, you, you, you sort of stink. Uh, can, can we give you some money and, and you just go on and, and, and go down there? Oh, no, they, they ain't going to ask you to come down here and sit on the front pew. No, the rest of them ch church members look like, Lord, who is that? Who's that done come up in him? Let me tell you, you, you need to get out of that church. But I'm going to tell you this right now. If that is a church that has the love of Jesus Christ in their heart, a church like I just read in Philippians that cares about others more than themselves, those brothers and sisters will see that person and they'll say, oh, God bless you. Thank you for coming. Thank you for coming. And they'll invite, would you like to come sit with us? And after church, hey, we'll, uh, we'll go buy you some new clothes. You will see who has the love of God in their hearts in these congregations. Now, I'm going to tell you this. And I got to end this video. I don't even know what time it is. <laughs> a dear friend of mine just, uh, just joined. Well, a lot of y'all are my friends. And um, God bless you, dear. And Brother Don and dear sister Allison and Rachel. I think my brother Lamar got on there earlier. He's probably on his way to church. But let me say this, friend. If your congregation does not have a heart, oh, that is so sweet of you, Terry. Thank you for telling me what time it is. So right now, I'm going to be probably about five minutes late. Thank you so much. That was so kind of you. Do you see? That's a prime example. And there goes Don. That is a prime example how brothers and sisters takes care of others. I appreciate that. But let me say this, and, and I'll have to go. Oh, she's on her way to church too. <laughs> Praise God. I tried to start this video earlier, so we'll have to come back and watch it later. But here's, here's the final point, and then I'm going to end. When you go to church, listen. Truly listen and watch. Watch, is the man preaching salvation or is he preaching a message to get you happy and excited? Is he preaching a message that will convict a sinner or is he preaching a message to make everybody happy? Does he encourage you to go out and be a soul winner for Christ? Does he? You need to take an account of the body of Christ that you're in. And if you are going to a church 
that doesn't preach the salvation gospel, you need to find another church. You might have to drive 20 miles to get there, but it's better to drive 20 miles in here from a minister who has a heart for the lost than to sit under a ministry that all they care about is making you happy and making you feel good so you will have a greater offering that you want to give.